Christy Zambidi. I'm Rita Remark and I'm a manicurist and nail artist living and working in New York. And I'm very excited to join your Let's Talk Beauty to Me series. It's a very cheeky name. I love it. A uh, little bit about myself. I've been in the industry for over 10 years and I paint nails for a living. I paint them on photo shoots for magazines or for editorials or for campaigns. I paint them for video shoots like for music videos or for films or for commercials, red carpet events, many New York Fashion Weeks, few Toronto Fashion Weeks and one London Fashion Week as well. Along with these other things, I'm also pleased to say that I hold two roles within the SE family. I'm the lead global educator at SE, along with being the national lead nail artist for SE and my home and native land, Canada. Uh, it's been a very interesting five months for me with many other people. Uh, listen, I hold hands for a living. So I've definitely had to pivot some of my specialties and learn how to take my skills and bring them into a digital platform. Much more work with social media, much more work with DIY manicures at home. But uh, honestly, I've been loving flexing these muscles. I love talking to people and explaining uh, my art form, explaining you know how to technically give yourself a great manicure from home, and um, just you know talking to people online, expanding my nail community, which is why I'm thrilled to talk with you today. Uh, we're gonna go through the SE Fall Collection, we're gonna go through some of my experiences working at New York Fashion Week, and many more. So let's talk beauty. So let's get into the SE Fall Collection. This season, we're inspired by the jungle, rich, saturated jewel tones, earthy colors. You're gonna die. What I love about these colors is that it just kind of reads as a, as a sophisticated, grown-up rainbow. There is something in here for everybody, from like a bold green color to, you know, a little bit more of a classic plum and red to a really bright, sunny, I don't know, what is this, mandarin orange? Sunny, sunny mandarin orange and a really beautiful, sophisticated, kind of luxe chocolate. Uh, it's beautiful, and they look beautiful together. Now, I mean, each of these colors speak for themselves, but if you want to try something different with them, I would recommend, you know, the French manicure is carrying on into the fall. So give it a try with a colored tip. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing the colored tip with the brown or the green. Doesn't really read as a hygienic final look, however, uh, you know, red, plum, blue, gorgeous on along the tip. Um, another thing to keep in mind is, listen, the mismatch manicure was really big for 2020. While these colors would look beautiful on all of your nails, it does read a bit too rainbowy. So if you do want to do a mismatch, mismatch manicure with these colors, I'd recommend playing up with the concept because I think there's so much more that we can grow upon rather than just having each nail a different color. Why not having two hands I mean, each hand a different color, you know? And I'm not talking high contrast. We don't want to look like Cruella de Vil, black and white. I'm saying choose two colors. We have um, Waterfall in Love, which makes me think of TLC, and Heart of the Jungle, which is my favorite color in the collection, as you can see. These two colors kind of sit in the same family of depth. So you're not creating this stark contrast. You're creating, you know, a really cool manicure expression without, you know, any nail art tools or nail art skills required. So play with it. Let, your, let yourself kind of like give yourself the freedom to try a few more things with the mismatch manicure look. If you're not sure of it, try it on your toes first. We have a few more months of pedicure season, I think. I mean, if you can be ambitious and uh, see how it feels and then gravitate it up to your nails. That's what I always say about a nail art look. If you're unsure about it or a color, if you're unsure about the color, try it on your feet. If it feels right, move it upwards. Um, best color pairings, to my, in my opinion, are, you know, this green and the blue. These two, what I love about pairing these two colors together, uh, Don't Be Spotted and Cargo Cameo, great names as usual. They both have this really beautiful luxe pearlescent finish that just kind of melts the two colors together, along with the classic red and a plum, which it's not fall without either of those colors. So give it a try. So I've been a lead nail artist backstage at Fashion Week for well over 15 seasons, and I have to say at this point, it's 
hard for me to differentiate between the shows where I had just a really great experience working and being, you know, a collaborator on the presentation and, a, you know, just a really great standout nail art look. So, uh, you know, I'll give you two shows where I just really loved the look and I'd also love to share with you one of my favorite shows that it was really super exciting to be a part of. Um, my first one that just stands out across the board, great experience, great nail art look, um, learning experience, uh, was the Christian Siriano Fall Winter 2019 nail art look. Uh, Christian, you know, what I love about working with him is that he's really always trying to push beauty, hair, nail, to do something different. And uh, he had a lot of black patent, a lot of Swarovski crystals in his collection. So I brought the two together and we did a really dramatic long coffin black patent nail with a line of crystals along the other side. It was just the right amount of drama uh, and they looked just spectacular on the runway. Um, but the journey to create them for the runway was um, probably closely comparable to a very stressful episode of Project Runway. I felt like I was a contestant on a contest show uh, because anything that could have gone wrong went wrong. And I had to have second or moment to moment problem solving skills. Everything from only having a day to create, you know, dozens of sets of press on nails for over 40 models for the runway. Um, nail technicians canceling on me last minute to create the designs. Me creating a workshop inside my very small hotel room to produce all of them. Um, not getting sent enough black nail polish to execute everything, not getting sent the right crystals, having to call his team um, to, you know, switch up the nail design last minute, halfway through us creating everything because we didn't have the crystals that we were requested. You know, I was expect, I was just waiting for, you know, the hidden cameras to pop out. Uh, but you know what? It was all worth it. I had an hour of restless sleep but I got to the top of Rockefeller Center, which is where the show was. All the nails fit. They looked spectacular on the runway. And now it's just one of my favorite stories to tell when I talk about Fashion Week, including one of my favorite nail art looks. Uh, the next look would definitely be Rixo, which was at my first London Fashion Week and only. Uh, I just loved this look because uh, Rixo was collaborating with Christian Lacroix for that season, and they just had all of this really great pattern heavy dresses and a, you know a reoccurring pattern which is very christian lacroix as a polka dot so i took that and ran with it and we created a mismatched nail alternating nails between black and white we used licorice and blanc and different sizes of polka dots which you would feel would be overwhelming but when you pair it with very heavily patterned garments it just kind of went with the flow and you know Polka dots are very easy to achieve at home, so I always love creating a nail art look that can be really easily translated to, you know, a salon or a DIY at home. And it, you know, having all of these like high contrast colors and polka dots, you would imagine that it would be over the top, but it just worked. It looked very French chic. I think Christian Lacroix would be proud, I hope. Uh, now my third one, uh, the nail art look wasn't necessarily, you know, a disruptor. <laughs> we did a classic topless and barefoot with a gel setter top coat, which let's be honest, sometimes less is more. But uh, you know, doing the Alexander Wang season, I forget which season it was, um, but it was for his season called Hashtag Wang Bus. And his show took place in four areas around Manhattan and Brooklyn. So we all gathered at his studio in Soho did all the nails, the makeup, the hair. Uh, it was Kaya Gerber's first season, so I got to polish her nails for her inaugural, inaugural uh, runway presentation with Alexander Wang. And um, what was really funny was I, you know, did everybody's nails along with my team of technicians, and then I followed the models around New York in a bus, doing touch-ups, finishing in Bushwick, um, you know, standing across from. Kim Kardashian and Kris Jenner and you know all of the famous and fabulous people that show up to an Alexander Wang party. It was like a pinch me moment. Very, very cool. Um, I'm super grateful for all the really, really wicked experiences I've had working backstage with Essie and New York, London and Toronto Fashion Week.
So nail art trends for fall, I think are very exciting. I think it's a very exciting time for nail art because, you know, previously, if you may have been a voyeur for nail art because work or lifestyle didn't allow for you to, you know, try a wild neon shade or try a long pointed nail or try, you know, nail appliques. Fact of the matter is most of us are still at home. So, you know, there's so much more flexibility and there's so much more room for being playful. So, you know, if you've ever wanted to give nail art a try or if you've ever wanted to just, you know, treat yourself to a manicure that makes you happy and not necessarily one that falls in line with trends of the season, how's your moment? Um, so I'm encouraging everyone to just try new things. Uh, of course, as I mentioned previously, French manicure, not going anywhere. Colored French manicure or the Cher Horowitz 90s French manicure. Oh yeah, it's here and it's not ironic. Uh, other things that I'm really excited that they're coming back are nail appliques. Uh, I'm talking like little gems, little studs, and this is a really easy to achieve look from home because all you have to do is purchase the, de purchase the gem. If it's, you know, if it's not too three-dimensional so it doesn't stick too far off the nail the best way to apply it is if it's a non-faceted stud um, you know polish press it into the polish right as the polish is kind of gummy and then top coat it and it's sealed it's coated it's done it takes you know a classic nude manicure and elevates it a little bit um, and if it's a faceted jewel or a gem you don't want to put top coat over top of it because then that takes away all of the glisten so just press it lightly into the top coat and i would use a thicker consistency like a more voluminous top coat so it holds on to it better something like gel setter by essie it's going to probably do the trick um other things to keep in mind similar to what i said in essie fall collection play around with mismatch it doesn't necessarily have to be every finger a different color two fingers one color you know the next three a different color maybe four fingers one color six fingers another color i only have one rule the cocktail nail you know the one signature nail that was really popular some people called it a thursday that's a faux pas no more doing that one you got to mismatch them a little bit more cleverly than that uh finally i have to say another trend that is really easily to achieve at home is matte Matte nails, use a matte top coat. It's a transformer. You know, if you put it over top of uh, a metallic shade, like a silver, like no place like chrome, it looks steely. If you put it over top of a glitter, it kind of makes them look like confetti. Play around with it. These are, you know, these are just your artist tools and you have the time and the circumstances to just do something that makes you happy. And I think we could all use that right now. So give it a try. If you want to do the matte top coat, highly recommend Mad About You by Essie. It's the best. So in quarantine, I've found myself to be somewhat of a nail polish big sister. I'm helping a lot of people from homes, answering all of their nail art queries, and these are some of the ones that continue to come up and that have the easiest solutions. So one, the biggest complaint that I hear of people who are used to getting their manicures done in a salon, but do it from home, is that they're not lasting. They're chipping after a day. Listen, if your nail polish is chipping after a day, I can guarantee it's one of two things or both. One, you probably didn't cleanse the nail plate. Our nails are porous, they're little sponges. If you're resting your nails against your face, running your fingers through your hair, using really, really hyper moisturizing antibacterial soap when you wash your hands, odds are there's a lot of natural oils along your nails that are interfering with the adhesion. Cleanse the nail with a little bit of nail polish remover and you're gonna have a perfect canvas for polish application. Number two, base coat. Base coat is an, adhe an adhesion layer that holds the nail polish to your nail. That is its purpose. It is your best ally in a long ring nail polish, uh, nail polish application. Uh, as well, you know, base coats nowadays aren't just, you know, a primer. They also have many great nail care benefits. Moisturization, strengthening. You know, you have skincare and you have makeup. You also have nail care and nail polish. Your nail care is your base coat. That's the one layer that comes in between your nail and the polish. Make it count. Uh, next, 
A lot of people ask me about polishing their non-dominant hand or they're just hopeless polishers and they're really bad at polishing within the lines. Odds are the tool that you have to solve this problem, you already have in your makeup cabinet. It's an angled eyeliner brush, one of these guys. Rigid bristles on an angle. Dip it in nail polish remover and wipe it along the area of the cuticle where you've over polished and it goes away like it never happened. The exact same tool that you used to fill your brows is gonna clean off your cuticle area. Easy as that. The other thing that you have to keep in mind is that this is actually a double-sided nail art tool. This sneaky rounded tip on this brush is perfect for creating signature statement polka dots. I actually use the back end of an angled eyeliner brush at Rixo to create those really giant polka dots along the nails. Add a blob of your polish, or like a puddle, if you will, on a piece of tin foil, a post-it note, something you could throw away uh, afterwards. Hold the brush on vertically into the little puddle, and then dab it, dab it, dab it right onto the nail. Every time you're gonna get a perfect circle, it couldn't be easier than that. You can add it just to the cuticle area, you can do it in a polka dot motif, and it's perfect every time and it looks like a salon nail art manicure. Easy as that. And that's it. Thanks for having me, T-Zone Beauty. It's been my pleasure talking beauty with you. If you would like to follow my work, you can see me on Instagram at Rita Remark. Or if you'd like to see more of the newest launches, some color inspiration, you can always follow at Essie as well. I hope everyone watching is safe, happy, and healthy. And I hope you learned a thing or two. Happy polishing, everyone.